Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I'm an architectural and interior designer. And today I'm gonna to share part one of my living room makeover. Now in this video, I'll give you some quick background of the house itself. We'll look at some space plans and furniture layouts and then move through to the mood board and then the reveal. So let's begin. So about three years ago, my partner and I fell in love with the 1921 Craftsman House in Tacoma, Washington. It's got its original hardwood floors that were refinished and some beautiful built-ins in the living room and dining room that I really love. I especially love the leaded glass details. The house was in really great shape when we bought it, so most of our updates so far on the interior have been cosmetic. Let's take a quick look at the floor plan of the living room so you can better understand the space. As you come in the front door, you'll notice that there's no foyer or anything. The door just opens directly into the living room. This is a pretty large room. It's about 27 feet wide by about 13 feet deep. There's a fireplace along one side with a mantle that spans the entire width of the room. This is also where the built-ins are located. And then this area here opens directly into the dining room with a pretty generous sized opening. It's about eight feet, which is nice, except that it kind of creates an awkward space in this spot just with the circulation. It kind of divides the space in a strange way. So we'll have to figure out how to make that work. Okay, so taking a look at our space plan here, now I've already laid this out, but I'm gonna sketch over it just so I can explain my thought process. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got some existing pieces of furniture that I wanna reuse. The first of which is our sectional sofa that we had in our apartment in Seattle. It's a perfectly good sectional. We still love it, so there's no reason to get rid of that. And you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm orienting it so half of it is against the wall and the other half is floating into the middle of the space. So what this does is that it starts to break up the living room into two separate areas. You know, um, this is kind of a long room. So anything we can do to break up that tunnel feeling, I think will be a good idea. Okay, so next we've got our coffee table uh, that's existing that can go right there. And then a little lounge chair can go right here. So already this starts to feel pretty good. You know, we're establishing a little seating arrangement. Um, I did try an option where I put the sectional this way, but it didn't really work well, partly because it blocks uh, the window a little bit here, but also having the back of the sofa near the entry, just like this, it kind of creates an awkward feeling that I didn't love. So I think this way is the best way to orient that. Okay, so to anchor the back of the sofa, we can add a bench here, which I think will work nicely. And this is also nice because um, it's near the entry. So when you come in, it's a good place to sit and take your shoes off. We can also add a little table here near the entry to store keys or whatever we need. And then also because there's no coat closet, I'm thinking that we can do some sort of wall mounted thing behind the front door to hold coats. So between this and then the bench and the table, you know, these three things will really help with the functionality of the entry. Okay, so next thing we can add a little planter here next to the bench, which will be nice. And then another planter next to the chair. This chair isn't particularly large. So by adding something to it to make a little mini grouping, it really helps fill the space out visually. All right, so next we can do a table next to the sofa to either hold a lamp or electronics or whatever we need. And then to round out our furniture arrangement here, an area rug will be a nice finishing touch. I think this one's an eight by 10 rug. So this starts to feel pretty good. You know, we've got our conversational cluster, which means that when you group furniture together, you wanna to have things pretty close together so it's easy to have a conversation and not have to scream at people. So this is, you know, a nice little tight knit grouping. And then it's also nice to sit here and look straight towards the fireplace. Now, I don't love doing a TV over the fireplace simply because it can create a weird viewing angle uh, that can hurt your neck after a while. But in this case, there's nowhere else for the TV to go. So we're gonna do it right here, centered over the fireplace. So this is a nice arrangement. I think this does it for the first half of the living room. With the layout done, we can move on to the mood board. Since I've got existing furniture that I wanna use, the sectional and the charcoal fabric, the black chair, and the tile and wood coffee table that I designed and built with my dad, I need to make sure that any new items work with these pieces as we start to establish a palette. First, we'll start off with the bench that will anchor the back of the sectional. 
I'm gonna go with a similar wood tone to the coffee table. I also found this metal coat hook from Room and Board that will fit perfectly right behind the front door. For the rug, I've decided to go with something really neutral. I really like this solid ivory one and I love that it's got a lot of texture to it. You'll see that ivory color pop up a few more times. The fireplace brick and built-ins were already painted white when we bought the house, so I've decided to leave them as is and just swap the wall paint color. I'm gonna go with Coventry Gray by Benjamin Moore. This will provide a quiet background for the rest of the items that I wanna add and also add a bit more contrast to the fireplace wall. Next, we'll add some lighting. I'm kind of digging the combination of black and brass lately, so I'm keeping any metallic elements to those colors. For wall art, I found these tree ring prints on Etsy. I like that it's an organic element, but the fact that they're black and white makes them more modern looking. For accent pillows, a buffalo check will be a nice nod to tradition and soften some of the more modern elements in the space, and also coordinate well with the tile on the coffee table. For accessories, I like these white angular vases from West Elm. I think they'll look good on the mantle. I'm also adding this simple black planter from Blue Dot. I'm excited to see how my snake plant will look in it. Finally, a few more accessories in the same black and brass will be a nice finishing touch. I really like putting together boards like this because you can easily see if the items you're choosing will work well together or not. This is a really simple palette but to bring in some more visual interest, I'm gonna add some African baskets similar to these and some plants. This will start to take the design into more of a bohemian vibe, which I think will bring more life to the space and make it feel more relaxed. So with the design done, it's time to tackle the walls. Since the floors were in such great shape and we're leaving all the white trim as is, changing the wall paint makes for an easy update. And that's done, so it's time to move on to the next step. To make watching TV a more enjoyable experience sound-wise, we've decided to add some speakers on the mantle. And to make them look as minimal as possible, we're gonna go with white Apple HomePods on either side of the TV. As for the television itself, we've decided on a Samsung frame. Because the position of the TV makes it such a big focal point, I really wanted it to look as nice as possible and I love that you can change up the art whenever you want. To add some ambient light in the evenings, we're adding a strip light concealed with a piece of wood L-trim painted to match the mantle. The light works with a phone app that lets you change the colors. I tend to prefer just a warm white, but when you live with a techie, you know, sometimes you gotta make compromises. The final thing we're adding is a new electrical outlet and mounted in front of it, an iPad in a white frame. This will serve as a central control hub where we can change the thermostat or the music that's playing to all the speakers in the house. So all that's left to do now is just add the final accessories to the space and see how it's turned out.
say, I'm pretty happy with how the first half of the living room has turned out so far. It's a nice looking space that's comfortable and functional. We really like spending time there. Now, of course, there's still a few things that I wanna do. I wanna add Roman shades to the windows and upgrade the entry table from the sewing machine with the piece of marble on top. But those will come later, so I'll post an update once that's done. Now, if you're curious about what the second half of the living room is gonna look like, then please check out the next video. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.